you know, on leak night for chapter 259, I was actually asleep, so I wasn't able to see the chapter as it was coming out. But when I woke up, I saw that a lot of people were hating on the chapter before I even got a chance to read it. So going into reading this chapter, I expected a boring and repetitive type of chapter. But when I got around to reading chapter 259 for myself, I can't believe that I saw that some people were calling this chapter bad. I don't know if it was some things in this chapter that weren't fully explained or didn't make sense to some people, but I think that chapter 259 is one of the best chapters that have come out recently, and I honestly believe that it holds the most potential and excitement for future chapters because we now have Toto back and he and Yuji are once fighting again. These two are always fighting some sort of duo tag team match and it's always the best fights in the series. Yuji and Toto versus Mahito, Yuji and Toto versus Hanami, and now Yuji and Toto versus Sukuna. I mean, it only gets better with these two. There are other things other than Toto that happen in the chapter that we're going to talk about, but for the start, I want to focus on Toto being back and how I think Toto and Yuji will be able to compete against Sukuna. So we will get to Choso making a sacrifice, so that'll be later in the video. For right now, let's talk about Toto even returning and still being able to use Boogie Woogie. The main question is, well, how can Toto even still use Boogie Woogie? Well, we know that although he did lose his hand, he didn't lose his curse technique. We know that back against Mahito, he said that Boogie Woogie died, but it's not possible for your technique to just pass away. You know, as long as the technique is engraved in your body, which Toto's is, you will always have it within you. You just need to find a way to use it. So all this means is that Toto somehow, some way while having his hand in a wrap, has found a way to still resonate with Boogie Woogie. He says that he can feel the pulse of Boogie Woogie thriving inside of him. We always knew that you didn't only have to clap both of your hands to use Boogie Woogie. We saw that Toto was able to clap Mahito's hands and swap with him back in Shibuya. And I will say this, this is only in the anime. There is a very questionable scene where both of Toto's hands are grasped against Mahito's and somehow, some way, Toto claps. You know, I, I don't know how he clapped. There are some theories of him clapping. I don't know how he did it, but so we know that Toto somehow, some way can clap without using just his hands. And that's if you take the anime as canon. In the manga, he always uses his hands. Now, one thing we know is that Toto has been fine tuning this technique Boogie Woogie alongside Yuta Akotsu, implying that they had some sort of training together and Yuta maybe showed him how to manipulate his curse energy better without the use of a hand, who knows. But we do know that he was able to train with Yuta and now he is able to use Boogie Woogie with one hand missing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say this right now. In this fight against Sukuna, we know that Yuji has the level of speed that's needed to keep on par with the current Sukuna that we have, but Toto has to have gotten faster from the last time we saw him if he even wants a chance to keep up in this fight against Sukuna. Because we know that Yuji has gotten significantly stronger since Shibuya, but we have not seen Toto since that time period, so he has to have undergone some sort of training in order to make himself faster, and I do think that Gege will have Toto be able to keep up to some degree degree because every time Yuji and Toto fight together, they are fighting at around the same level. So I think that Gege is just going to insert some sort of physical training on top of this technique training so that Toto will be able to keep up and I don't want to say be equal to Sukuna in terms of physical stats, but at least be somewhat relative to where he is able to keep himself in the fight. And as I just said, for Yuji, he already has shown that he has the physicals to keep up with this current Sukuna. But we do know this, every time we've seen Yuji fight against Toto, he just performs it better than we've ever seen him perform in the past. For example, remember that fight against Hanami? That is when Yuji was able to grow and bloom into the beginning of a sorcerer. Toto was the reason for this. And in the fight against Mahito, we see that Toto was the reason that Yuji was even able to get up and fight against Mahito in the first place. And then, because of a fake out that Toto used at the end of the fight, Yuji was able to land a black flash on Mahito. And he even, in the moment of being in the zone before the black flash, Thank Toto, and this is why they were able to win the fight. So we do have this common recurrence. Whenever Yuji and Toto fight together, Yuji performs better than usual. So I think that not only will we have the Yuji that we've been seeing against Sukuna, but a better form of Yuji because he is now fighting alongside his big bro. One of the main problems that Toto and Yuji are going to come across is that 
Sukuna already knows the ins and outs of the boogie woogie technique because he was inside of Yuji's body and witnessed every time that Yuji and Toto fought together. So he already knows what to expect and if anything, we do know that you can sense sorcerers by their cursed energy feel. So as long as Sukuna can sense where both of them are at the same time, even if they swap, it's not like Sukuna will lose track of them. For example, you know how one of Toto and Yuji's best things that they do is one of them comes from either the left or the right and the other one comes from the opposite side and then out of nowhere they swap at the last second maybe it'll be Yuji that lands a black flash at the last moment where Toto just swaps somewhere else but the thing with Sukuna is if he can keep track of both of them it won't matter if they swap. As long as Sukuna kills either one of them, his job becomes extremely easier. Because if he kills Toto, he no longer has to worry about the boogie woogie technique. And if he kills Yuji, then he no longer has to worry about the guy who can keep repeatedly hitting his soul over and over. If anything, we'll probably see Sukuna go for Toto first, because Toto is more of an annoyance than a damage character, if that makes sense. You don't really see Toto doing damage amongst the high tiers anymore. But we do know that he is annoying against these higher tier fighters because he can just keep swapping people around. Now one strategy that I do see being useful against Sukuna is that we know that he can actually swap people with Mei Mei's crows so I, I, I don't know if they'll do this but there is a chance that we will see Toto swap Sukuna up into the sky with one of Mei Mei's crows. I, I don't know if Toto will end up doing this, but it would be a way to just disorient Sukuna because like Mahito said in Shibuya, even when you know about Toto's curse technique, it is disorienting. I do not think that it would be good if Toto just kept swapping the three of them, Toto, Yuji, and Sukuna with each other. I think the best way for them to get an advantage is if they are swapping the three of them with other objects nearby. And I do want to revisit something I just said. I did just say that Toto isn't known for being able to hit as hard as the high tiers we've seen throughout Jujutsu Kaisen. But to be fair to Toto, a long time has passed. We don't know how much physical training he's been doing. So it is possible that he hits just as hard as Yuji now if not harder, but I don't think that will be the case because Yuji is just known as being one of the hardest physical hitters recently, especially because he now has this soul resonance attached to his punches. So Yuji probably is the hardest physical puncher right now. And the important thing here is to know, we don't need Toto to do punches that just crumble Sukuna or just make Sukuna cry out in agony. The only thing we need from Toto when it comes to physical attributes is one, the speed to keep up within the fight, and two, just enough power behind the punches to damage Sukuna a little bit, just enough to make the punches hurt. I'm not expecting Toto to be strong enough to actually damage Sukuna to an extreme degree or anything, but as long as he can make Sukuna be in some sort of pain, then he and Yuji will undoubtedly get a leg up on Sukuna because Sukuna will have to worry about both of them damaging him. And there's one more thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I haven't seen this be brought up on social media, but to be fair, I'm not on anime social media that much. But I do not see people talking about the fact that Toto could potentially swap out another sorcerer at the last moment to deal a deadly strike to Sukuna. We see in this recent chapter that it is possible for Toto to swap out with Maki. We see it in this picture here. So it is possible that as Toto is coming towards Sukuna, whether it be from behind or the front or the side, he can swap out with Maki at the last second and have her stab Sukuna with her soul sword, which although it doesn't kill Sukuna, we see it does some sort of damage as it actually in the past has stopped Sukuna from using RCT to heal himself and the soul damage does much more than physical strikes. But for the most part, I think that this fight will be restricted to mainly Yuji, Toto, and Sukuna. I don't see other sorcerers hopping into this fight because this is the big return for Toto. And Toto and Yuji have fought together in the past. It's one of the most iconic things in Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji and Toto's fight. So I think that Gege will have this be reserved for Yuji and Toto only until either one of them falls or is about to fall. And I do want to talk about the other things that we saw in the chapter we do know that Choso sacrificed himself and that is honestly one of the saddest things I've seen in Jujutsu Kaisen recently because you do have to understand that in the grand scheme of things Choso has only known Yuji for a few months 
But in that few months of time, Choso grew so close to Yuji that he was willing to sacrifice himself in order to keep Yuji alive. And I do know that some people on social media were saying that it is bad writing that this blood ball was able to save Yuji's life. But the thing is, Choso put everything he had, you know, all of his life energy, everything he had into this blood capsule. So I'm not surprised that it was able to save Yuji from the furnace as it is possible that the reason this ball was so strong was the result of a binding vow that Choso made on his deathbed, or it is just possible that since Choso put everything he had, all of his life energy and curse energy into this ball, that was the reason that Yuji was able to survive in it. Either way, we know that Choso made a magnificent sacrifice, and I do think this was a good ending for Choso, as it seemed like his usefulness in the plot has been achieved. So I don't think that we need Choso for the future of the manga, and I don't think that anybody, although it is sad that Choso was gone, is going to miss him too much going forward. One other thing that was cool from this chapter is that we know that the conditions for using this furnace, which is just the flame arrow, is now the use of using cleave and dismantle, sort of like preparing food. You cut up the food first and then you cook it with fire. That is what we now see with Sukuna. We know that it has changed over time because Sukuna had to make binding vows, especially because of the things that happened during the fight with Gojo. But the end result is what we have now. Sukuna has to use cleave and dismantle first, basically preparing the food. Then he is able to use furnace and burn everybody inside of his domain expansion. I love this concept a lot. I think that Gege executed this very well, having this whole idea of Sukuna being a chef and preparing the food before he puts it in the oven. And because of this, we don't even know if the others in the domain expansion actually survived, like Miwa and Maki for example, because this furnace does disintegrate everybody in there. We know that Toto has his job to save the others, but Toto wasn't direct when he said the condition of the others, he just said that they're most likely okay. So if Toto was successful and completely swapped the ones inside of Sukuna's domain outside, then they're alive. But if he messed up, then yeah, they got cooked. But the only way for us to see whether or not they survived and whether or not Yuji and Toto will prevail against Sukuna is to wait and see what Gege decides to do next. I want to thank you so much for reaching the end of this video. And if you enjoyed, then I would really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel as I do post on different topics that you guys give me and topics that I come up with on my own. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.